Hey everybody, how's it going? Danny Soleil here, aka Travel Man Dan, aka Reading Man Dan, and welcome to day number 43 of my 75 hard journey. Locked in, baby, hell yeah! All right, well, I'm here going ahead documenting each and every day of my 75 hard journey to go ahead and be able to have something, well, that I can look back on later in life or if I don't make it to the 75 days to kind of look at right now, analyze how I did it, what I did wrong, so on and so forth. But mainly, ultimately, what I want to go ahead and do is inspire one single person to give it a try. So maybe you're at home watching these videos and you're thinking, hmm, if this guy Danny could do it, he seems like a regular dude because that's exactly what I am. And uh, well, I think that I could do it too. I just need to go ahead and follow the program and I think I can do it. So hopefully that's you. And if that is you, please go ahead and put down in the comments below and let me know how it's going. So we got a lot to get through today. I told you that we were hopping back in the book. We're getting through the five tasks. We got a big one today. So here we go. I'm going to go right into the book, 75 Hard, A Tactical Guide to Winning the War with Yourself, written by Andy Frasilla, the creator of 75 Hard, the creator of um, the Real um, AF Podcast. <laughs> uh, Real AF Podcast. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead. This is probably the hardest of the tasks for not only myself, but most people. Right. This is the one that there's a lot of um, room for error. There's a lot of room for cheat. There's a lot of room for, well, just not sticking to it and being committed. There's a lot of room for excuses. There's a lot of room for bailouts. There's a lot of room for all these type of things. And I'm talking about the diet. Here it is, guys. Critical task number one, choose a diet and commit to it with the goal in mind to improve your health and physique. Now, I just recently switched over my particular program. He did it here, so that's what gave me the idea that I wanted to try to squeeze two different diet programs in this whole little 75 hard. So what I did was the first six weeks, I went ahead to a restricted calorie diet of 1,500 calories that I followed to a T, whether I was out at a restaurant with friends from work or I made my own meal prep. Um, and you know, it worked really good guys. And what it was, was like a 40% carbohydrates, 40% protein and 20% healthy fats. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to bring you a video. I just couldn't move around very well in the kitchen. I had to hold things, grab things. And when you're on crutches, it really sucks. But I did it, I did great. I'm two days into my new program, which I wanted to do for 30 days. And you know, I'm gonna add a couple extra on there too. So I'm now doing the carnivore diet. But I'll tell you, through the first six weeks, my personal health and physique, I think, has changed quite a bit. I feel great. I'm sleeping sound. I'm, I'm just noticing little things, um, you know, around the weight area. I don't know how much that has improved my health in terms of, like, blood tests and things like that. But I definitely think it's probably helping on my knee joints. And, um, well... I went ahead and weighed myself today and I definitely think that it's helped my physique as well as you may or not, not notice, but I lost 23 pounds, 23 pounds. Yeah, that's right. Lost it. Um, can gain it real back and <laughs> real quick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. That was through six weeks. Now I'll do like, uh, I think it's 34 days of the carnivore diet. My hopes is to lose maybe another 10 or 15 pounds. I'm really putting forth that effort to get under a certain number. And, uh, you know, I want to go ahead and improve my health. Um, not for the vanity issues. Obviously, I want to stay movie ready at all times. But, uh, you know, I just want to take some of the weight off because of the knee joint and relieve some pressure there. My idea is to go ahead, release, uh, a, a let go of a lot of the weight strengthen the knee a really strong through rehab and therapy and then build the legs back up and, and get them really strong muscular so that they do the work the muscle does the work and not the joint and then the muscle and the upper body are, are symmetrically balanced so i got a plan i'm sticking to it um this one is the hardest task i think for most people hands down so let me get into what Andy Frisilla talks about and then, um, you know, because it's a, it's a big chapter, but uh, I'll do my best to go ahead and read you all of it right now. Let's get started. Critical task number one, choose a diet and commit to it with the goal in mind to improve your health and physique. 
If you asked the average person to identify one area of their life where they lack discipline, a good number would answer food, me included, all right? We all know the statistics. About 40% of Americans are obese. Even though that's not a majority, that's still a huge number. But in my opinion and experience, that fact doesn't come close to represent how bad the situation is when it comes to most people's relationship to what they eat. As a guy who struggled with weight my whole life, I know how it feels when a person who is born with a fast, efficient metabolism looks at you, points a finger and says, what's wrong with you? How hard is it just not to overeat and not be fat? Have some self-respect. My first response is, screw you. You have no idea how difficult it is for people like me, who could do nothing more than smell a deep dish meat lover's pizza and gain 10 pounds. Is that you? I get it. Trust me. But my second response is, overeating is just one way that people fail to exercise discipline in their relationship with food. As a guy who runs a nutritional supplement empire and works at the heart of the fitness industry, I can tell you this. A ton of people undereat, and that's why they lack the energy and stamina. <clears throat> a ton of people eat the right volume of food, but not the right combination, and that's why they aren't operating at peak performance. A ton of people have never actually taken the time to determine whether or not they have dietary allergies, so they don't realize that there's something they're eating that is specifically causing them inflammation. Huge point right there. Uh, I heard lots of good things about the carnivore diet and how it helps inflammation. I'm trying to seek that out. And causing fatigue, brain fog, or just plain causing them to feel like crap. And since that old saying is a scientific fact, you are what you eat, dysfunction and deficiencies in your diet means dysfunction and deficiencies in you. You will never get what you want out of yourself until you get control of what you put into yourself period. Okay. That's why the first critical task of the 75 hard program is focused on you and your relationship with food. I wanted to zero in on something that is not only fundamental to your actual existence, but something that you have to face every single day of your life. Every single day you feel the need for food. Every single day you feel a desire for certain kinds of food, some of which are good for you, some of which aren't. Every single day you face choices, decisions, Relate it to food. Every single day at the end of every day, you can look back and ask yourself, were those choices good choices? Or did they suck? Did they help me move forward, who I want to be and the life I want to live? Or did my choices move me away from ideal life and self? Okay. There is literally no other area of life where you are daily, hourly, constantly being faced with decisions and choices that have such a profound effect on the experience of life. For this reason, when it comes to your existence at its most basic level, there is no area of life that is more critical for you to exercise discipline and mental toughness. So that's why the first critical task focuses on diet. You need to exercise mental toughness when it comes to what you eat. But before you misunderstand, let me be clear about something. In this program, I'm not going to tell you what you should eat. I'm not giving diet recommendations. The reality is that every human is different. We have different genetics, family dynamics, work environments, lifestyle features, time schedules, you name it. So I'm really skeptical about any diet book that claims to be a one size fits all. That's awesome, I love that. The truth is, if you really care about your health and if you want to live at peak performance, you need to take the responsibility yourself to figure out what your diet should be, right? Some foods bloat people. Some foods are people, the same foods are, are you know, me and my friend were just talking about like uh, how yogurt, um, you know, really bloats other people up and, and some people are fine with yogurt. So that's on you to find out what is good for you. You know, that's what Andy Frasil is talking about. Don't just take the shit that they're giving to you. Find it out, you know, ser search, you know, where you find foods that you know you might have like small little allergies to you know and, and this types of things let's get into some more that's right you have to do it how do you do that it's real simple number one get your goals set where do you want to be physically are you overweight and needing to lose pounds do you feel like you're too skinny and need to add muscle do you need to build strength to deal with the physical requirements of your work or life those are critical questions. What are your goals? Absolutely. I need to build more physical strength 
in the muscle and, and, and of the leg so I can help with the daily activities of my knee joints, right? That's what I figured out, okay? Also, I have to lose weight. Look, if I said to you, I just lost 23 pounds. If I said to you, here's a 25 pound weight, I want you to carry this around for two weeks straight, everywhere you go. I want you to sleep with it. I want you to wake up with it. When you go to the bathroom, hold it with the opposite hand. Or if you're sitting down, lift it up over your head or somehow, some way, just have the friggin' weight with you. You'd say, no way, that's impossible. That's crazy. That's ludicrous, right? But essentially, that's what I was doing for so long. And I'm just using me as an example. There's people out there that are losing 50, 75, over hundreds of pounds, right? Carrying that shit around. Let go of it. All right, you don't need that weight, guys. Figure out what food you got to go ahead and dive down deep and get mentally tough with this. Get some help. Huge proponent of this. Get some help. I believe 100% in taking personal responsibility and ownership of your life. But that doesn't mean I think people should go at it alone. Especially when it comes to our health. Most of us need help. Find a personal trainer or a fitness professional who will consider your goals and help you determine what your diet should be. My only com my own company offers this. If you'd like to check it out, uh, my transformation starts today.com. Okay. Like I said, that's up to you. And you need to get that all figured out before you start uh, 75 hard. But once you do, once you've determined what your goals are, and once you've determined what your diet should be, and when you're ready to start 75 hard, and the very first task is to commit to that diet. Please have a hard, people have a hard time understanding what commitment really means. So let me spell this out for you. Commitment means unwavering, consistent execution. Okay, perfect. That means you have to commit and keep this diet every single day for 75 days. No days off, no mornings off, no afternoons off, no evenings off, no hours off, no minutes off, 75 days straight. Commitment means no switching up the diet for a break or a change of pace for other reason. That means no cheat meals. No cheat meals, guys. I know that's a big thing amongst the health community. And, you know, you might want to go back to it after 75 days. Like, you want to stay with your program. And then, you know, you make it to Sunday, you have a cheat meal or whatever. I don't know. But during this program, he's very adamant about no cheating. You can't have cheat meals. Dude, there was times I wanted to eat peanut butter cups. Uh, not one single freaking fucking peanut butter cup that I eat so far. Okay, there is no cheating with this. That's the whole thing. Once, once you understand that, you can dive really hard into your diet and take it serious, man. Okay, let's get into it. That means no cheat meals. It means no refeed meals. It means not even one authorized M&M or gummy bear or strawberry milkshake. <laughs> I love it. It also means that if you're supposed to get in a certain number of calories or protein right here 1500 and you think i'm just sick of eating so much chicken too bad you can't decide to skip that meal commitment means they're holding yourself to this diet to the letter not giving yourself flexible categories that you can manipulate when you feel like you're not you like you want to if you are on a macro based diet which is a ridiculous term because it really means every diet is macro based you are not allowed to justify shitty food because it fits your macros it's not allowed for 75 hard. If you aren't familiar with counting macros approach, it basically means someone can say, well, I've got a daily bu budget of X grams of carbs and I haven't used them, so I can justify eating this piece of pizza because I'll stay within my daily allowance. If you are not following a macro program, the food must be clean. No junk. Now listen, I, I had this. I had this come up several times, especially when you're eating out at a restaurant. But... After a while, you start to dial in. Google is great. There's calorie counters out of there. I would just go to it. I would, I would kind of, you know, look at uh, if the menu didn't provide it. A lot, most restaurants provide um, all that information that you need. But then you just look it up. You understand it. Then you, you can kind of uh, pick what you have to eat and what you cannot eat. And uh, I'll tell you, there, there's, there's. Uh, I went out for a big dinner with, uh, with my work and stuff, and I had this. I ordered this pork chop. It was giant. So I cut it in half because I knew that it would not, it would definitely take me over the calorie intake. So you gotta, you gotta stay committed to that. You gotta understand that you, you may look goofy at times in public. You may uh, have to sacrifice. And, but, but as long as you're staying committed, 
who cares? It's, it, it, this is your challenge. This is what you're getting through. So keep that in mind. I think that's that's an important thing to, to really stick to and, and have, you know, I guess in your subconscious or your invisible mind, right? Commitment means they are holding yourself to this diet. Oh, sorry. Uh, you need to determine ahead of time specifically what your diet is going to look like and follow it exactly. For instance, you might have a daily diet that looks like this. Meal one, a cup of egg whites, half a cup of gluten-free oats. Meal two, six ounces of ground turkey, three ounces sweet potato, 100 grams of vegetables, and so on. Get it? Look, I'm not saying there can't be some variety. For instance, if you're protein source, it's okay to eat lean turkey, sometimes eat fish, sometimes eat ground beef. Right here, I did that, loved it. But it's imperative that you set those parameters ahead of time. You can't just take the fluid arbitrary counting macros approach. That won't work for 75 hard because it allows for so much deviation which as I explained early, leads to compromise and quitting. Yeah, man, that's that's a huge, huge point, right? Um, you gotta hold yourself to it. The other thing is, and I wish to have to say this, but some people don't have any common sense, is that I understand there may be marginal insignificant discrepancies in the amount of food you eat. For instance, one food scale might register a handful of green beans at 50 grams, while another scale might identify as 53 grams. So technically, depending on the scale, you might eat more or less food you were supposed to. If that happens, don't make a big deal out about it. There's no way to avoid these variances. Use your head. And that's what I was talking about, like when you're out. You can go like, first you go to the menu of the restaurant, right? Typically they have it. Then you go to the Google machine, all right? And they have it. And then you just gotta kind of, you know, based off of probably best if you're going to do something like that. My my personal opinion, what, what worked for me is the first two weeks I always ate in. Okay, and I got an idea of what that amount of food would look like, right? What a certain amount of food looked like. Then when you're out, if you can't find it on the menu or on the Google machine, then you can kind of just pull, 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 pull from your memory and say, look, okay, I, I kind of I have an idea of what that is, right? Um, but you know, err on the side of caution, right? You may be hungrier that night, but err on the side of caution. The point is to be committed. And that's the point to be committed, to keep the diet you determined ahead of time. And on some level, you're just going to have to apply a little common sense. You don't know when you're doing something you aren't supposed to don't do it. The program won't work if you do it right. Don't say like, I don't know uh, this, uh, maybe this whole pork chop is this and you eat the whole thing. Then you, then you've essentially cheated it and, 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 and you know, it's not going to work for you. So at this point, I hope you understand something critical, something I really want to drive home. The 75 hard program doesn't dictate and demand a particular diet. I'm not telling you what to eat. What it does require, require is that you commit to a diet. What I am telling you is that once you choose what you're going to eat, there can be zero compromise and zero deviation. That is awesome. Okay, this is a really big chapter, so I think we're going to split it up too. So I'm going to read another page, and then we're going to split it up and get back to part two. You have to commit to it 100% for 75 days straight. 75 days. Got it? Good. But there's one more thing that 75 hard requires when it comes to your diet. Commitment means no alcohol. Listen, I have a good beer as much as the next guy. I love a good beer as much as the next guy. I love a good beer. If Andy Priscilla ever sees this video, let me buy you a beer. I love beer too. Everybody knows it. Shit, I did 350 friggin' episodes of my beer show right before starting this. I shut the beer show down on YouTube because I wanted to stay committed. So... Nobody loves beer as much as, well, I shouldn't say that. I love beer too. And I'd love to buy uh, Andy Priscilla a beer one day. I, you know, I'm putting it out there. But, uh, you know, there's no alcohol in the 75 Hard program. That's a very serious thing, right? Okay. And, um, you know, we're going to find out why. Why he's, uh, you know, put this in there. I understand that wine in moderation has health benefits. But the reality is for the average person, alcohol has zero benefits and zero health benefits, and in most, if not all cases, works against their health. But that's not why this requirement is 75 hard. It's a requirement because most people really enjoy drinking. Two, drinking almost always goes hand in hand with overeating and overindulging ourselves. And three, giving up drinking is a lifestyle adjustment, it is hard and requires mental toughness. I've been sober a little over 60 days now, and man, I'll tell you what, yeah, it's it's um 
It, it required some mental toughness. It, it really did. He's not bullshitting about that. Definitely going to go back to drinking one day, but definitely going to do it a little bit different. Not going to go as, as ham on it. All right. That's what we're working to cultivate. So that's why no alcohol is allowed. No alcohol, guys. So let's wrap this up. Choose a diet. Commit to it 100%. No compromise. No deviation. 75 days straight. That's task number one of 75 heart. Here's a note. As crazy as it sounds, there are experts and gurus out there who have never actually participated in or completed their own programs. I would never ask you to do something I had not done myself. Not only because that's unethical, but because I wanted to, one, make sure this program actually worked, and two, experience its power in my own life. So with that being said, in this what I did part of the discussion of a critical task, I just shared my information, what I personally did, as I was working through the 75 hard program. All right, so that's, I'm going to end it on that. We still got uh, a couple more pages, and we're going to talk about, you know, Andy Frisilla and what he did during his journey of task number one through 75 hard. He talks about, you know, uh, uh, you know how he did it he did it multiple times i love that he said it's unethical to go ahead and put something out there and ask people to participate or purchase and do these things if you didn't do it yourself right you know um a, a good commander a good leader wouldn't uh you know lead his people into uh, a certain situation without doing it first and that, that's what i really admire about this um and look if you checked out andy for or whatever he's you know Pretty much of the same, you know, I like the cut of his jib, as you would say. He's, he's very similar to me. He's a guy from St. Louis. He likes to drink, too. He's definitely a blue-collar, hard-working dude. Um, so, you know, for him to have to put down alcohol, and like I said, I've, I've never had any extreme weight issues. I just wasn't born that way. He was. So for him, that was a, that was an overwhelming uh, accomplishment to get through that. And I'm sure he talks about it a little bit later. He still struggles with it. So don't think that, you know... All is lost before it is even started for yourself. If you're watching this video, you know, know that there's other people out there. You know, you may have to do a little uh, research before. You might want to go to the doctor and check, uh, you know, your, your vitals, like your cardiovascular system. You, you know, you can check uh, your body mass index. You can check your, you take blood tests and find out, you know, it, you know, do you have some type of uh, high cholesterol? Is, is, is certain things uh, bad for you. You can take allergy tests. You can do all this prep work and then you can base it with a nutritionist around your program for 75 days. And look, we talked about it earlier. 75 days is a hell of a start, man. It's a hell of a start to turn your life around. So um, definitely the help is out there is what I'm saying. It's, uh, it's definitely proven through the creator of this program. And, um, you know, here's the thing too, is like, get yourself a good personal trainer if you don't know how to do it. I'm not talking about the local gym for the dude to, to you know, to, to run you through a weight program that's going to, you know, just count uh, down from 10. I've, I've done it. I was a trainer. I get it. I know it. I see those, you know, get a, a person that is genuinely invested in changing your life. Okay. Someone that, you know, really appreciates his clients, comes in, works them, gives them an awesome workout. Find the right trainer. Don't just find a trainer. Find the right trainer for you, right? Find somebody, you know, there's a lot of trainers out there. And I don't want to throw shade on it, but they're training people and they're off, you know, looking around in the gym or, you know, uh, you know, I saw guys, you know, basically scrolling through Instagram while they're training. Don't find that guy. Find someone committed to you and find the nutritional help that you need if you need it. And, and, and this is the extreme one way. And um, obviously somebody like myself who, you know, I've been around exercise. I was a trainer. I studied uh, anatomy, kinesiology. I graduated with an exercise science uh, undergrad degree. I, I know what I'm doing, but the hard thing for me was the diet. I've always professed to people that if, if I could really get down my diet and really work hard, I could really transform a lot of things. And I feel like I'm, I'm on the way, right? It's only been 43 days, but I feel like I'm on my way. So let me be your example. Let anybody else just go to you know, hashtag 75 hard. Check it out. We'll be back to find out what Andy Frisilla did tomorrow on the book. But um, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found some value in it. I hope you, found, you know, it was interesting to you. Um, it, it really is probably the hardest one. But, um, you know, preparation and uh you know just being prepared right 
being prepared gets things done. So if you go into this thing and say, you're like, oh, you know what? I'm really going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It may take you 30 days just to prepare for it. If you get things in line, where you're, whether it be your home gym or whatever, I hope that you can do it, guys. I hope that I can go ahead and inspire one single person. Okay, that would be awesome. I would love to know who you are and where you are. Please let me know down below. Thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Reading Man Dan. And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.